all about connecting and needs analysis. And I guess what we're talking about here is, is that when you enter into the premises, one of the things that you want to do is, is make sure that you don't go straight into a pitch. Rather, you connect with the client, you build some rapport, but particularly the questions. And what we know is that those commercial agents that are in charge or on the front foot with asking questions are usually in control of the conversation. If you're walking into a conversation, you're having all the questions fired at you, you're actually off track with where the conversation's headed. So one of the great ways, particularly if they're firing questions at you, is to turn the conversation on them is to ask them a question like, well, would you mind if I asked you a few questions about your business or a few questions about your situation? Therefore, what we discuss today will be tailored to you. Would you be okay with that? So once again, that gives you an opportunity to flip the conversation back on then. The key thing for me is building an agenda. Now, I actually don't like sending the agenda to a client and saying, oh, these are all the things that we want to talk about. I think that's very much old school pitching. What I would be uh, encouraging you to do is to actually go in with a blank sheet of paper and ask the client what they want to achieve in the conversation. And asking them that early and having a blank sheet of paper and the approach is listening to what they want to achieve, but actually writing down those things that they're telling you, but writing them in the order that you want to deliver it. So let's just say you ask the client what they want to achieve and they say, look, I wouldn't mind knowing a little bit more about your services. Well, what particularly, well, we want to know what your, what your, your commission costs. You would write that down and typically commission would be something that you put on the bottom of your agenda or on the bottom of your blank sheet. They might also ask you, what, what, well, can you tell us how much you think we would get for the place? So that would be something you'd probably put up in the top third. They might also ask you about your marketing. And once again, you would write that down and you would answer that with, I'm glad you asked that because we take our marketing very seriously. Once they've gone through all the things that they want to achieve, and of course making sure you balance that up with the business partner and asking everyone what they're thinking, what you want to do is then add the bits that you want to cover off. So once they've told you what they want, you add in the bits that you want to cover off. And so what you do then is you switch that a bit the agenda around, you take the client through what we're going to discuss today. The idea behind that agenda is then you stay on subject. You stay in control of the conversation. And this is a little bit like when you, I don't know, you go to a doctor and you've got an ear infection and he sends you off to a, a, a specialist because he doesn't know what's wrong with your ear and he draws a little picture of your ear. He's got eyes and he's got arrows and models and he's got this little, this, this picture that's a little tailored picture of what's wrong with your ear with his CT scan and he charges you $500. It's a little tailored kind of agenda that I think adds best spoke value to the overall conversation. They're not going to feel pitched at. What I would do with that then, that agenda, is I'd work through it one by one. I'd always start with a question. You never lead into a, an answer or an opinion. So once again, if we're on the agenda item around marketing, it's a question like, has if, if anyone ever explained to you about the marketing options that are out for you in the marketplace? Or if it lands to digital, it'd be a question like, has anyone actually explained to you what an Elite Plus does? Like the difference between an Elite Plus or a standard listing or not marketing at all? Has anyone actually gone through the pros and cons of that? And so it's always important to start as you're moving through that agenda with a really clear, open-ended question. And then once you hear that answer, it's really important to listen to that answer. Because some of what you're hearing might be a, 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 a mindset that quite clearly has been misrepresented by the information they've read. So often what we've got to do is help them unlearn before they relearn. So the way in which we do that is we listen to the answer and we help them purify that answer. I like using that word translator. We want them to be a translator of information. We want to be that translator for them. So once we hear their answers, what we like to do is reframe what we heard, and then what we want to do is pass that reframing back. So it might be something like, Dan, so what I'm hearing is A, B, C, D, or E, is that right? Now often what happens with the paraphrase is the client, after they hear that paraphrase, will either say, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, or no, that's actually not what I thought, I don't believe that. So the beautiful thing about the paraphrase is if you're not on track and it's going to go pear-shaped, they'll tell you and it stops you from advising the wrong thing. But if you paraphrase someone, hey, so what I'm hearing is that you want to know more about marketing, you are interested in knowing a little bit more of our products, particularly online, and they say yes, then you be confident with the advice that you're about to give. So that paraphrasing and that bridging technique gives you wonderful confidence in what you're advising. Once you work through that agenda and you're questioning, you're hearing answers, you're paraphrasing and advising on each subject, my advice is take notes down on what they say and take notes down on what you say against those agenda items. The reason for that is that one of the great things that you should be doing is at the end of your appraisal, straight after it and the faster the better, you send an email back to the client going through everything that they told you and everything that you told them. So a wonderful demonstration of your listening skills. And mark my word, one of the main things you sell is trust. 
the very centre of trust is that you demonstrating your listening skills. So it might be, you know, dear John, thanks for the opportunity of catching up just now. I just wanted to recap what I learnt about your situation. This is what you told me, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is what I mentioned to you, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And then a call to action at the end, a really wonderful way to build momentum into the conversation and close it off. Of course, in that needs analysis, one of the strategies I always use, particularly with um, business and commercial properties, is the past, the present, and the future needs analysis. So particularly if we're looking at their business overall, questions like, how long ago did you move into the place? Why did you buy it? Where were you before this? Where were you leasing before this? Why did you lease this place? What did the business look like back then? What are the current challenges? Go to the present. Talk to me about how the business functions. Talk to me about how you'd like it to function. How is this premises holding you back? And then you go to the future. So three to five years from now, what is your business going to look like? What is the premises is going to look like? What are the, what is the features of the property need to look like for you to do good business? So that past, present, future gives you context about how your services are going to slot into that, including marketing. As well, you can use the past, present, and future even on subjects like marketing. You know, have you um, ever inquired on property before? How did you actually source that inquiry? Currently, you just mentioned you just leased another property. Can I ask you how you actually found that? And into the future, what do you think is going to be the future tenant or buyer for your property? What type of marketing means do you think they're going to use? Which one would you like me to concentrate more on or less on? Again, those types of questions of past, present, future really set all the answers on that agenda up really, really nicely. So in summary, build an agenda, past, present, future, make sure you paraphrase and make sure at the end of those appraisals, you're capturing that whole agenda and sending it through an email. Good luck.